That huge group of, of metals that are in the middle of the periodic table, that's what we're going to be dealing with today with ionic compounds that include transition metals. Uh, we're going to learn how to write formulas and name compounds involving transition metals. So as a quick reminder to you, here we have the periodic table. And um, transition metals that we're looking at for the periodic table, we've already talked about how to write a compound that involved, let's say, lithium or beryllium bonding with nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, some of these nonmetals over here. We've already talked about that, but now we're going to talk about what happens when you have these transition metals, these guys that are all located here in the middle of the periodic table. And we're also going to include those post-transition metals in there as well, um, these atoms that are sitting down below um, the periodic table, these guys down here, including um, lead and, and tin and things like that. So that's where we're focused on today. And, and these transition metals pose a special challenge for us because they have the ability to form multiple charges. And that's something that's really important. Transition metals can form multiple charges. Um, whereas, um, let's say uh, we have an alkali metal will always form a one plus charge and an alkaline metal um, an alkaline earth metal will always form a two plus charge and so on and so forth. You know, halogens a one minus charge. Transition metals, again, form multiple charges. And we'll give you the example here of copper. Copper can form bo both a two plus or a one plus. And so what we do is we have a naming scheme that um, allows us to identify the difference between these two. And we're going to use what's called the stock system of naming. So down here, um, Let's look at our naming uh, for these two ions. So for this first ion, obviously we're just gonna call it copper, but to distinguish it between the other copper ion, um, we are going to look at the charge. And here the charge is a one plus, so we're gonna use a Roman numeral to distinguish between um, the one plus and the two plus. So we're gonna call this the copper Roman numeral one ion. And down here on the next one, because this is a two plus, we are gonna call this the copper Roman numeral two ion, just like that, okay? So again, really, really important um, in transition metals, and you should probably jot this down as well, is, is um, the Roman numeral is equal to the charge of the ion. Again, Roman numeral, Roman numeral equal to the charge, okay? Um, let's let's try a couple. It says uh, you try it. Name the following, and we've given you um, a PB two plus and a PB four plus. And if you'd like to try this yourself, pause the video right now and then press play um, and uh, see if you got it right. Go ahead and do that. Okay. So hopefully you tried that one yourself, and let's see if you got the right answer here. So um, looking down here, PB is located right here on the periodic table. So um, this is definitely in the post-transition metal group. Um, so we're gonna Go ahead and use Roman numerals. And these guys are both going to be lead. And we're going to have the name equal to the charge. So we're going to call this one the lead 2 ion. And we're going to call this one the lead 4 ion. Just like that. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to get into writing formulas involving transition metals. And so we're going to take an ionic compound, metal and a nonmetal, that has a transition metal in it. So again, these guys. Um, are going to have Roman numerals. So here's the first one here is copper 2 chloride, and we're going to write a formula for copper 2 chloride. So um, looking up at the periodic table here, copper is located right here in the middle. There's copper. Transition metal, so we're going to use a Roman numeral. So we're going to go Cu. It does have the, the Roman numeral 2 there, so I'm going to use a 2 plus charge. Then we have chlorine. This gained electron to call to form chloride. We look up here, chloride is located right there. And hopefully you recognize the halogens have a one minus charge. And so this is going to be a one minus charge. And now what we're going to do is we're going to crisscross those charges just like we did before. The one comes down, the two comes down, and we reduce if necessary. So we're going to get a final formula of Cu. The one does come down, but we don't write the one Cl. Two, and that's our final answer there. Again, once again, um, when we when we have ones down there, we don't need to write them because um, by writing Cu, we already assume that there's one. Okay, the next one we have chromium 
Roman numeral three oxide. So let's look up here at the periodic table. And we have chromium right here, which is Cr, definitely a transition metal. So we have Cr, the, the Roman numeral is three. So we're going to do a three plus. Oxygen is O. We know it hopefully by memory now, but if not, we'll look up there. But as in column six, it's going to form a two minus charge. Crisscross those charges, two goes down, three goes down like that to give us a neutral compound. So we get an answer of Cr2O3 as our final answer. And that is not reducible. We can't divide um, anything down there to get a lowest whole number ratio. That is the lowest whole number ratio. Okay, the next thing that we want to look at is we want to look at um, naming compounds that have a transition metal in them as well. So um, down here at the bottom, we were given a um, compound, ionic compound that does have a transition metal. Um, we know it's a transition metal. There's Fe right there. Is We have Fe right here. So we're going to go ahead and name this guy. Now, one, one method, and it's not the only method, but one method that is helpful um, for naming these guys is to go ahead and break them back up into the respective ions. So FeO3 would break up into Fe plus O. Okay, um, now we definitely know that oxygen, which is right here, um, forms a two minus charge. It always forms a two minus charge. So we have Fe2, right? And so our goal is to figure out what the charge is here. So if we're using the crisscross method, this two came down here, and that's what give us, gives us the two there. So we have a three given here, so that three must have come from up here so that we could crisscross it down behind the oxygen, okay? So that gives us a hint into the name. So we're gonna call this iron Roman numeral three oxide. And again, this Roman numeral three is representative of the charge of iron that it forms when it forms an ion. Let's try another one. We have MN3P2. Again, we're going to take this and break it up into its respective ions. Manganese and phosphorus. Manganese is located um, on the periodic table right here. So definitely a transition metal. So we're going to need a Roman numeral. For most of them we do. There's a couple we don't though. Um, phosphorus is located right here on the periodic table. Phosphorus, um, as you know, forms a three minus charge. And so we're going to go ahead and write three minus charge here. Um, excuse me, I'm going to, I'm going to erase this, uh, parentheses off. I started writing parentheses like I was going to name it and that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. So again, our goal is to figure out what's going to go here. We know, we know that, um, this three is going to go down there and that's where we get that three from right there. And so we have a two there. So that must have come from right up there. So this has got to be a two plus charge. So we're going to go ahead and name that based on its charge. Manganese Roman numeral two phosphide. Okay. Again, that Roman numeral two is equal to the charge of manganese. Let's throw one more at you. This one is a little trickier, um, but I think we can work our way through this and figure this guy out. So um, we have PBO2. We're going to go well, again, once again, break this guy up into PB and O. We do know that O is a two minus charge. Okay. So given that we're trying to figure out X here, we're trying to figure out what's up there. So if we bring down this two here, there should be a two right there. But in this case, there's not a two there, there's a one. So something else must have occurred. And so my guess is we have a reduction happening. This formula is showing what's happened after we've reduced. So what we can do is try to kind of figure out what can go there. If we put a two here as well, and we were to crisscross those charges, we'd end up with a formula of PBO, which does not work because our formula Ultimately, it's PBO2 that we're looking for, so let's not try that. Let's try something else. And hopefully you're seeing right now, maybe this is a four plus, and let's see if that works out. If we crisscross this now, and bring the four down, we get PB2O4, 
which is divisible, we can reduce that down, divide both of those by two to get PbO2. So that has to be the correct answer because that does match what we have right here. So we're going to go ahead and name this based off of the original charge, which is the four plus. So we're going to call this lead Roman numeral four oxide. And that's how we do those. That's a kind of a tricky one a little bit there. Okay. So you can have um, formulas that are, have been reduced um, and then you'd have to keep that in mind.